Are you flexible enough to ride a bike? Do you have the hip mobility and the flexibility in your legs to get on and off of a bike? If not, then you're missing a great opportunity to save money on gas and get some exercise while you get around town. If you'd like to be able to get on and off of a bike easily and comfortably, then watch to the end of this video so you understand what muscles might be stopping you and what muscles you need to stretch and train so that you can ride a bike comfortably and safely. So if you're ready, let's get ready to think right, move right, and feel right. I've been riding a two-wheel bike since the age of three and I've found it a really helpful way to establish independence and explore new places, new cities, new trails, etc. I take my son to school on this bike. He actually just holds on to this little handlebar that I made for him. Riding a bike is a fantastic way to explore a new city and it's the method I prefer whenever I move to a new town or am considering moving to a new place. And of course, once I've moved there, I still use the bike to get around. But biking alone does not improve your hip mobility and in fact can really limit your hip mobility and create stiffness and tightness in the muscles of your thigh and around your hip joint. This can often lead to a problem that makes it hard to ride your bike. For years, I personally had a problem with stiffness and tightness in the muscles in my inner thigh and groin that prevented me from being able to comfortably mount and dismount the bike. And I've seen a lot of other people have this problem too. So I want you to do this little test for yourself. If you've got a bike, see if you can actually bring your leg up and over without feeling like you have to use all kinds of body English. If you don't have a bike handy, use a chair that has a seat back that's probably around hip height or use a stool or a ladder or something, something to gauge whether or not you can swing your leg up and over without feeling popping, snapping, cracking, or tightness on either side. The ability to open up your hips so you can swing your leg around is really important if you have a bike like mine where the top bar is up high. If you have a beach cruiser or a step through, then it's not as big a deal, but it's only hiding your lack of hip mobility. So it's good to be able to test this and make sure that you have that hip mobility and that you're not being limited by your hip mobility. Of course, if you just want the easy answer, get a step through or a beach cruiser, and then you'll never have to worry about your hip mobility, but your hip mobility will eventually come back to haunt you in some other way. So let's say you do this test, you try to lift up and over and you can't do it. It just feels too uncomfortable either on this side or this side. You can maybe swing it this way. Nope, can't go that way. If you're having problems with either side, then I'm gonna show you some stretches that are gonna help you mount and dismount your bike so that you can do this safely and comfortably even when you're biking around town. Hey, I wanna say a big thanks to Don, Charmy, Envy, Nicole, and Moondancer for your support of the Upright Health channel. If you wanna support this channel too, use the thanks button or the PayPal link down below. Now let's get back on that bike. All you're gonna need is some sort of elevated surface to put your foot on top of. If it's a hard surface, use a shoe or padding so it doesn't hurt your foot, or use a couch like me. You want a surface that's at a height that doesn't force you to fall over. So find something low enough, and over time, we're gonna gradually start using higher and higher surfaces. You can hold on to something to help you balance. You're gonna keep this knee straight. You're gonna look for a stretch in the inner thigh. You're gonna feel it in the groin as you lean over towards your surface. So you can just work yourself in towards the surface, towards your couch, and just keep feeling that stretch. Keep this knee as straight as you can and keep yourself feeling as safe as possible. If you feel like you're ripping and tearing muscle, back up. You're going too far too fast. If it means you're right here and there's like a solid medium level stretch, that's okay. If you feel like you can handle more challenge, you just keep working yourself deeper and deeper into the stretch and keep reaching for your tippy toes, keep reaching, 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 and keep finding angles and positions that are challenging for these inner thigh muscles. That may mean turning in a little bit more, that may mean keeping your hips open a little bit more. This open position is generally gonna be the most challenging and it's the one that's gonna carry over most when you're trying to bring your leg up and over the bike seat and the top bar. So make sure you explore, find any positions that feel really stiff and hang out, breathe, take your time, spend about a minute or more when you feel ready and just let those muscles learn to lengthen. 
ultimately you want to be able to at least touch your ankle if not your toes and just keep going the sky is the limit or i guess the floor is the limit literally the floor should be the limit Ugh. you're gonna do two rounds on each leg and if you find that one side is much stiffer than the other side you're gonna do a third round for that stiff side now, if you want to get some faster results, we can add some extra spice to this and increase our hip mobility and hip strength so that we can mount and dismount that bike easily. So for this more advanced routine, what we're going to do is start off in the same stretch. We're still going to do those 60 second holds and then we're going to use contractions. So then we're going to use those muscles to push the foot down and really feel that contraction for five seconds, then relax. And we'll do that five times, really feeling the contraction and then relax five seconds contraction and relax and then we just repeat this five times on each leg you can do this for one or two rounds on both legs and then if you have a weaker side you do an extra set for that weaker side then we're going to add a strength component to the hip flexors so from this position we're going to think about using these muscles to lift the leg up. You saw that and you thought, okay, what's so hard about that? Go set your foot on a chair and try this. And you're gonna see that these muscles are probably going to cramp and they're going to hate you. You're gonna lift up, hold, and then back down. Lift up, hold, and then back down. Do this to fatigue. That might be five reps, it might be two reps, it might be 15 reps. Whatever it is, you wanna feel these muscles working. Of course, do it on both sides. Really focus on feeling these muscles here near the top of the thigh and the outer hip here. They should be the ones working to lift that leg up. And they're also going to be the ones that work to give you stability when you're balancing on one leg and throwing your leg up over the bike. Do two sets of these hip flexor lifts on each leg. And if you have a weaker side, then do an extra round for that weaker side. And after you've done all that, you can just practice lifting your leg up and over, up and over. How does that feel? What's it feel like on the other side? Can you go both directions? Just practice. Think about these as even martial arts kicks and try not to kick the lamp behind you. Getting on and off a bike is just as simple as lifting up and going over. So if you have any piece of furniture you wanna practice this on, go ahead. When you first start, I would just go through this workout twice a week, Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Saturday, or something similar. Make sure you have days of rest in between. For this little practice of mounting and dismounting, you can go ahead and practice that. Just make sure you have stability, you have the balance, you have things around, and you're not going to break your hip if you fall down. It's something worth practicing on a daily basis. Just don't cripple yourself with soreness. If it feels like, oh my lord, I can't move today, don't force it massage things, take a little rest, maybe take two days rest, and then go back into practicing at a lower intensity. So to review, if you're a total beginner and you only wanna do one exercise, just do that stretch where you've got your foot on here and you're exploring those angles that feel really stiff and hold for a minimum of 60 seconds, two sets on each side and an extra set for the stiffer side. If you have more time and dedication, you wanna work harder at it, you add in the other stuff, which is going to include at the end of your stretches, you're gonna do those contractions, feeling those five repetitions of five second contractions then you're going to move on to doing your lifts so you're going to go two rounds of this two fatigue on each leg just feeling those muscles working and then if you have a weaker side you do an extra set for that weaker side as you're finding yourself getting more flexible if you get more range you're able to go to higher surfaces and you should do that. Work on a higher surface. See what it's like. See what the challenge is like. If you want, you can also work on lower ranges, but whatever you do, explore and make sure that you're increasing the amount of control you have in different ranges of motion. The more range you get, the easier it is to mount a bicycle. If you'd like other ways to improve your hip mobility, be sure to check out the Healthy Hips program at uprighthealth.com DIY. And I've also got these free videos here that you should watch right now. If you want to support this channel, use the thanks button or the PayPal link you'll find down below. And I promise I will not use your money to buy training wheels. Like, share, and subscribe with notifications on. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks, life shouldn't.